One of my favorite plugins is Arturia CMI V emulation of the Fairlight CMI digital sampler from 1979. Uh, this one also has a built in sequencer here and uh, you can mess around with it. It's pretty fun. It's not too bad. Um, but obviously the tracker is far superior. So I thought what I would do is kind of use this uh, emulation of a 1979 digital sampler and create a jungle track with it. So let's go ahead and go over how we get this set up. The first thing we want to do is get the MIDI from the tracker into Ableton. And to do that, we just go to options, preferences here. Uh, you want to make sure your input is, um, is set up like this. You want to make sure your track and sync are on. And so after we had that set up, you're pretty much good to go as far as uh, Ableton getting MIDI from the tracker. What we want to do is make sure the CMIV and Ableton routing is set up. So to do that, let's go ahead and close the CMIV here really quick. So as you can see here, I have a channel for each sample in the CMIV. We have 10 samples here. That's the maximum number of samples you can load. I don't know if that was also a limit in the original. These are just the 10 samples that we can load in here, but we want to trigger those samples for each of these channels here. So let's go ahead and look into what we're doing in the CMIV uh, plugin itself. So on the CMIV, we have a few tabs up here. Um, you can get really advanced with this thing, especially if you're trying to layer samples and just using it for a singular sound. It gets a little bit more limited when you're trying to um, kind of use a collection of sounds for a single track. So let's go over the samples that we have here. We have an Amen. And we have kind of like a night atmospheric pad sound. And then we have a Rhodes chord sample. And then we have some jungle ambient sounds. And this is an 808 reverse crash cymbal sound. And this is just kind of another atmospheric pad sound. Yeah, so those are our samples here. And what we do on the tracker is, this is like how you would sequence anything. And to be quite honest, you know, the more you mess around with uh, software samplers and routing things like this and setting up samples to do, to do different things, it's, it's really not unlike setting up a hardware sampler. Every sample down here is assigned to a MIDI channel. And the way you do that is we have, after you set your samples up, you can go into this tune map and you have the same sample list here, right here, right? And you can you select them, and if you want the Amen break to trigger from channel one MIDI, you just change it right here. That's all you do. Um, it's going to default to all when you set these up initially, so you want to make sure you just kind of. I have these kind of. I have the 808 on channel three, and I did some you know rearranging when I was doing this. But yeah, I mean you just you just assign it there. You assign the MIDI channel there, um, and if you want to change the root note to kind of uh, keep it in tune, you can do that too. Um, if, if you're doing anything fancy with that, um, otherwise you can just leave it at C3. And then the mixer is like, it's just a basic mixer. Um, as I said, it has an insert on each channel. Um, and the, to be quite honest, the effects actually are, are pretty okay. Um, the EQ is really weird and it's, it colors the sound quite a bit. And then you have one return and I just have that set for reverb. I'm not really using too much of it. And then the master channel has two inserts, which I'm just using a compressor for. I was trying to do some bit crushing and it, sounded, it didn't sound the great, greatest. So I just turned it off. Um, yeah. So that's how you kind of have that set up. Um, it's pretty basic stuff. To use in a break in the CMIV VST and probably, I don't, I doubt this was the same. I doubt it had the same feature on the original model, but on this one, as you can see, I have the basic Amen break loaded here. You can see that I'm doing velocity changes here on track one. And those velocity changes, the reason I'm doing that is I have a, also have an EMU E5000 sampler. And one thing you can do with that is you can map incoming velocity from your MIDI to a sample start position. And I don't want to go into too much detail because I don't want to confuse anybody, but uh, that was one way to do it. The other easiest way to do any of that stuff was just to use propeller head recycle and chop up your brakes and then send them over via SCSI into your sampler. It was, it was really easy to do, and it actually is still easy to do today um, if you have an old Mac or an old PC with a SCSI card. But what we're doing here is I have the Amen break here. I'm going to be using the velocity from MIDI and I'm going to map that to the sample start position of the Amen break. And so to do that, you just, you would, you have your break, you have your sample selected here in, in the, in the CMI. You go into the edit tab, or I'm sorry, you go into the assign tab here 
and you click on what you want to map from your MIDI channel or from your MIDI input. And I'm going to go ahead and select velocity. And as you can see, I have it mapped to sample start. That's all you need to do. It's really simple. And if we go back to the control screen, I'm going to go ahead and play this, uh, the sequence here, and I'm just going to solo the amen break and you're going to see the, uh, position pointer move around as the velocity changes. And so that's really easy to do by using MIDI velocity. And so by using that, you can get it to essentially chop up your brakes. Getting it to line up perfectly, you know, that's just kind of one of the things you're going to deal with um, if you use a CMIV. Uh, it's not going to be perfect, and that's fine because it adds a little bit of character and a little bit more kind of uh, organic feel to the brakes, anyways. So that's how I use. Uh, that's how I kind of slice up the brake here. You know, the other stuff's kind of set up. There's really nothing too too special here. Um, the only thing you can do is, I mean, you can really, you can go into the edit menu here and you can adjust the filters and sample rates and stuff. And I did that for some of them and it, it sounds really, I mean, you get a lot of character out of this plugin. I think it's pretty great. Um, you know, there's really nothing crazy going on with it. Um, it's not complicated. At first I was kind of overwhelmed when I opened it up and, but you know, after using it for a couple hours, I was like, this is really easy. And it was actually a lot of fun. You know, I, I like, I personally like limitations when making music, especially if you're kind of stuck on what to do when you only get 10 samples to work with and you have the motivation and drive to, to create something even if you think it's terrible or you don't want to share it or whatever um, just doing something from start to finish with a limitation it helps foster creativity and it you know kind of shows you new, th new ways of doing things but yeah um, anyways I'm gonna include this uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna include this preset here jungle 79 uh, hopefully it'll be fine I'm also gonna I'll include the Ableton file and the tracker project file as well and um, one cool thing that I wanted to share is I exported the file from Tracker as an impulse tracker file to open up in Renoise. And in Renoise, uh, I had to kind of adjust some things there, but I was able to get it set up in Renoise, so I'm also going to be sharing a Renoise file. Yeah, so anyways, that's really all there is to it, and I will go ahead and play the track that I came up with. It's just a few minutes long.